guys, Samantha from Juicy Mo Tutorials here and today I'm going to be doing a review on some core tool or core rollers, excuse me, core tools, <laughs> core rollers. So I've got two over here, I've got a winter frost and a square rhythms one. So I'll just take them out of their packet. And they're a lot lighter than I expected. When you see them, when you're going to buy them, you'll probably expect them to be pretty heavy, but they're actually, for some reason, I thought they were made out of metal. That probably is a mistake on my part. But they are actually made out of plastic. And so they're very light, which is great. So, I immediately see that they are quite deep, which is great. So you can see that it has a lovely continuing pattern. It's lovely and deep, as is with this one. And I'm going to give them a wash now because I can see that there is a little bit of powder in there, I think it is. So before I bring it over to my clay, I just want to make sure that they're nice and clean. So I'll give them a quick wash with some water and brush them out with a toothbrush just to make sure that I get rid of any powders because I can see that they're not completely clean they're quite clean but just to make sure I'm going to go clean them out okay so I give them the wash I haven't dried them off though because we want to lubricate them because I don't want to risk rolling these without spraying a little bit of water on them so pop these to the side and we'll try a mica shift first so I've done a mica shift tutorial already in depth, so I'll provide a link to that. But for the moment, I'll use these for the mic. I'll try a mic shift with these, see how nice and deep they are. So I'm going to give this a good spray, and then I want to give it a good roll. There we are. And I'm really happy with that. It's got some really nice textures. And so I'm going to pop that onto the side and we'll do the same with a silver one using this winter frost one. I thought it was appropriate to use a silver one for the winter frost. And now I'm going to roll. There we are. And I'm pressing quite hard. So I'm probably going to have to practice with this a little bit more to get it properly deep. But from the looks of it, the pattern is really deep. So I might give that another try to see if I can get it deeper. Okay, so I rolled it out again. And so I'll give it another quick spray and we'll give it another try. So I'm going to stand up to do this actually. And I'm going to be pressing down. Now you might want to do this with gloves because the roller is actually quite sharp so I'm doing okay here but you might want to wear gloves because doing this over and over again could hurt your hands okay so I did get a better texture there okay so I'll just quickly dry that off okay and now I will shave some pieces off. So I'm just going to choose an area that's got a nice high pattern. So it's got a really deep texture if you press hard enough. And so I'm betting the mic shift could be absolutely wonderful. Oh yeah, very nice mic shift. So yeah, and you can even keep these little frills for other things. And if you're wondering where I got them, I got them off of Linda's Art Spot. She has a whole bunch of them over there. She also has a whole bunch of other textures, which I'll be showing in more videos in the future. If you haven't watched my unboxing video, you should. I got a whole bunch from her shop just the other day. Well, it was actually quite a while ago now. There we are. Okay, so I will say that the mica shift that they give is really fantastic. I'm going to do the uh, gold one 
in a minute so that you can see what it looks like but I just thought I'd show you that one I guess it takes a little bit of practice to use them they're not as um, easy to use as the rubber stamps I will say that but then again these ones are probably excellent for things like jars and bracelets where you need a continual pattern going on forever and ever so that is a, one of the really great upsides to these because you can just carry on rolling as far as your clay allows you but just a quick thing they are quite sharp to press into the clay that hard so if you're going to use them I'd advise wearing gloves and it will make the process a lot easier and less painful <laughs> but it's definitely worth practicing the rolls because I don't do the best job there but that mica shift is as good as any mica shift I've ever made it's absolutely beautiful so I'm really happy with that mica shift especially if I were to bake that, if I were to bake that, the mica shift would be even better. This looks as good as some of my baked mica shifts, so that's excellent. I'm going to do the gold one now. Okay, so I practiced a little bit and I managed to get a really nice mica shift out of this one. This one's a little bit easier to roll because the pattern's a bit bigger, but you can see that the texture is super deep, which is what I was expecting because it's really nice. So I did a little bit better with that one than I did with the winter frost. So you can see the mica shift is just as good. Lovely. And really rich and easy to see. So they're great for mica shifts. I was thinking we could also try Mukumegane, see how they go. So again, I'll just roll this one to show you how I roll it. I'm not going to lubricate it. I tried with the other one not to lubricate, lubricate it and it actually worked just fine, it actually seemed to work better there we are almost done, there we are now we'll slice this one it's a little harder to see that this one how deep it is so it's really easy to get some nice mukumega on out of this oh that looks nice, very happy with that and this is just a black and white mukumega with lots of layers. I'll just slice that across and boy it is giving a beautiful look. These are great for Mukumegane. Went a little deep there. And the great thing about these textures is because they are so deep if you roll them out properly even if you go too deep like I did over there the texture stays which I found um, a lot of the other texture stamps don't do that, they're fairly shallow and so if you go too deep by accident you can end up messing up your pattern and the pattern doesn't look as good. So these one, I'd say these are probably the deepest texture stamps I have, oh well I'm going to treat them like texture stamps, they're probably the deepest texture that I have ever ever come across. So if you're looking for deep textures, these are absolutely fantastic. They are a little expensive, I will say that. But getting one or two or three every now and then would be great. It's a great addition to your stamp collection. I like to buy one texture maybe once every month or two. And then just slowly build up my... Um, range. But these ones are great. Look at that mica shift. It's beautiful. And I'll do one with the winter frost as well, but I'll do that off camera so you guys don't have to watch me do it again. So I'll just get rid of that. And I'll bring over my acrylic rod and roll that completely flat. This is lovely. Very happy with this. And I must say the geometric patterns are beautiful. I'm not so crazy on the uh, natural patterns because they repeat and so it doesn't look as natural. But the geometric patterns that the Corollas have are beautiful and probably some of the best geometric patterns I've seen. So I'm just busy flattening that out like I usually would. I have a whole bunch of Mukumegana videos if you're interested. I'll include a link to where you can find a whole bunch. 
There we are, pick that up. And here we are. That's beautiful. I'm very happy with that. So I'll definitely say that they work for a lot of techniques. So here's the marker shift and the Makume Gane. They both work really well. So I'll try that with the winter frost. Okay, so I finished this marker shift. And so again, I think it looks really nice, but I think the geometric one looks better. So if I bring that over. So I think this one looks better. So I just think that the core rollers work better for the geometric patterns. But then again, you can get some really wonderful shavings out of these. So these are the parts that I shaved off of the texture, and so you can pop those into different projects. I've used something similar to that in one of my projects called where I used them in a microfills necklace. I'll provide a link to that tutorial, but these are really cool, so you can get them quite easily from this pattern and they all interlaced and in really nicely. It's really nice, so that's really cool. So they work really well for Makumegane and they work really well for uh, mica shifts and so anything where you are taking the clay imprinting and then slicing it works really well for. Some of the techniques that they won't work for are uh, one technique is called the Sutton Slice that you need a stamp for and so because of the way these are shaped you can't exactly go popping clay into here and then trying to roll it out. I just You could try doing it but I think it would be a very risky move and I'm not sure if they would work. So I'm not sure if that is the best idea. So I don't think that they would work for techniques such, a, such as Saturn slices and I don't think they're really going to work for things such as textures where you want a shallow texture because to be honest these textures are really deep and so they're better for techniques where you're actually going to be shaving off the texture to reveal a pattern. So if you were to try and use this one as a texture it might look a little bit too bolshy but then again you could practice with your rolling pressure and you could try and get something that's a little bit more like this one. So over here you can see that I had the deep texture over here. Oh cool roller rolling away. <laughs> so over here you've got a shallow pattern, over here you've got a deep pattern. So I think the best thing to do with these tools is to maybe get some leftover clay or just some mica clay and practice your rolling because I think that's actually um, what's going to make or break this tool for you. So if you can't get your rolling pressure even, you're going to end up with grooves like over here which isn't really going to work. But if you can get it right, you can get basically any texture you want. So I've done a little bit of practicing. I went off um, to practice with the rollers now that I've done the first part of the review where I showed my first impressions. So this is about 24 hours later. I got a comment on my unboxing video for uh, a tip to use these core rollers and to get a nice even texture. The comment was from Gritty Kitty 50 and she said that you should use a mounted stamp, mounted rubber stamp to roll the core rollers. And now I'm just going to use a wooden block because I think that I've tried it with that and it works much better. So I'll just press this into the clay to get stuck. Oh wait, before we do that actually, I want to first give a light spray. And then we will pop this into the clay just to get started. And then I'll bring over a nice big wooden block. And then I'll start rolling with even pressure all the way up. And you need a nice long piece for this. So um, I need to practice this a little bit more to get it completely perfect because you can see that I have uneven areas over here but for the most part it worked pretty well so you can see that the texture is much better now so I'm going to just dry that off quickly and I'll show you it again and this will help you keep your textures level okay so here's another piece now just gently tap that onto my surface give it a light spray then bring over my roller and I'm going to do it the way I did it before now you'll press hard and 
with practice you could get this right but the downside is there's a lot of room for error it's slower and now I've been practicing this as well so you can see that it's a bit better and another downside is that these rollers are quite hard on your fingers so you'd want to use um, you'd want to use gloves but with a bit of practice you can get it pretty good so you can see it that's pretty nice I've still got some uneven areas but after a bit of practice that worked pretty well now I'll bring over the one that I did with the acrylic block okay so here's the one with the acrylic block and here's the one by hand so I'll just brighten that up so you can see so I can't see a lot of difference this one I can see it I haven't got the texture quite as deep as over here so because I can push a lot harder with the uh, wooden block not the acrylic block the wooden block I can get a nice deep texture which is great but I'm still getting some uneven areas so I'm going to get a thicker wooden block and that should make it a lot better but you're also going to just need to practice with the wooden block and the hand method also works pretty well just I think you need gloves to do it properly so I do hope that that review was helpful to you and if it was please do let me know as that is always helpful to me and basically my idea on the core rollers is they're a little bit expensive for what they are they do have a few cliffhangers that you do need to overcome but once you've overcome them you can create some really beautiful pieces so here are these pieces that I packed up so you can see it, Mukumegane is really nice, their mic shift is excellent and those frills that I was talking about earlier I've done a tutorial, I recorded another tutorial for a little bit later I'll show you the tutorial later on but this is basically created with a core roller stamp so it is absolutely great once you get used to the cliffhangers so they're not going to be as straightforward as a rubber stamp for sure but once you get used to them they're well worth it so maybe spend to maybe buy one practice with it see if you can get the hang of it if you can then I'd recommend buying more because it's gonna take me a little bit of practice to get the hang of these because well they're not quite straightforward but they're really really nice so I do recommend them and please do check the links below this video as there will be links to the articles oh excuse me the videos that I have recommended in this video like my mica shift video and the mica frills tutorial that I also mentioned and there will also be a link to where you can buy the core rollers at Linda's Art Spot she's got a whole bunch of them on there along with a whole bunch of other texture stamps that are really cool so be sure to check that out and as always, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.